Hello everyone and welcome to one of my videos. Today's video I wanted to talk about the different coat patterns in ferrets. So the internet says a lot of different things. It ranges from like nine different coat patterns to 20. So I'm just going to be talking about the 10 that I am most familiar with and then the variations that can be within those 10. And then at the end I will throw in a little, a little extra one. So the first coat pattern we are going to be talking about is albino. Albino ferrets are most commonly recognized for their red to ruby colored eyes. They have an all white coat and a pink nose. Albino ferrets eyes appear red because they lack pigmentation. So the red color is actually just the red blood cells beneath them. Although the fur is white, it can appear yellowish or even an off white color because of the skin's oils. Albino ferrets may be hard of hearing, but they are rarely deaf, unlike darker eyed whites or blaze or panda coat patterns, such as my ferret Jinxie. The next coat pattern is red eyed whites. Although red eyed whites look similar to albinos, albinos lack the pigmentation in their eyes, which give them the red color. But red eyed whites do have pigmentation in their eyes, so their eyes are really more just a dark ruby color. Red eyed whites and dark eyed whites also might have some guard hairs that are a little bit different in color, such as darker, they can be gray, as opposed to albinos who are always white, with the exception of when they turn kind of yellowish with age or just with more production of oils in their skin. The next coat pattern is dark eyed whites. Dark eyed whites are generally very similar to red eyed whites, except they have darker black colored eyes. The next fur pattern is marked white. Marked white ferrets usually have a white or cream colored fur. Their tail is usually silver, black, or even a brownish color. A lot of times they will have a darker color running down their back to their tail, which almost gives them like an opposite colored skunk appearance. They usually have dark colored eyes, which would categorize them as a variation of dark eyed whites. The next coat pattern is a panda. Panda coat patterns look very similar to that of a panda, hence the name, except their darker furs are often variations of gray as opposed to black. Pandas have a white head with a darker tail and darker legs, and their feet will have mitts. Sometimes the tip of their tail will also be white, much like my Jinxie, which can also actually be an indication of Wardenburg syndrome. Panda ferrets can occasionally also have colored rings around their eyes, though this is not as common. Often, panda and blaze coat pattern ferrets will have a condition called Wardenburg syndrome. I am not going to talk too much about that because I do have another video on that, which I will link, but it is a genetic predisposition to being deaf, which a lot of panda ferrets are, such as, again, my Jinxie. The next coat pattern is a blaze. A blaze coat pattern's most distinguishing feature is the white line going down the middle of their head. The white could be small to almost the entire head. Jinx is a perfect example of this. She is a panda coat pattern, but she does have a blaze spot on her head. However, the darker spots are very light, so she is still considered a panda. Blaze and panda ferrets markings are almost always associated with Wardenburg syndrome. Blaze ferrets can also have other markings such as a bib or mitts, which I will discuss later in this video. The next coat pattern is a silver or a silver roan or rowan. I don't know. I honestly don't know if I pronounced that correctly, so I'm just going to call them silver. Silvers can look similar to a gray and white version of a sable, but they can also have much fainter patterns and a lot more white. The amount of gray can vary greatly and they have a cream, silver, or white undercoat. Darker silver ferrets typically have a darker mask and lighter ferrets have little to no mask. Their nose colors can vary from pink, speckled, brown tea, gray, or black, and I will also be discussing the different variations in noses later in this video. The next coloration we are going to be talking about is champagne. Champagne ferrets, cinnamon, and lilac ferrets all look very similar to me. They just have their slight variations, so I am going to do my best to differentiate between the three because a lot of ferrets that, like, their owners identify them as one of these colors can, like, vary over time and end up becoming one of the three colors depending on the season and how their coat changes. So champagne ferrets are a more diluted form of cinnamon coloring, at least that's what it looks like to me. They have light brown to light reddish colored legs and a tail and have a cream colored undercoat. Their nose is almost always pink and they typically have dark eyes, but they can also have burgundy or dark ruby eyes as well. The next coat pattern is a cinnamon. Cinnamon ferrets have more of a rich reddish color compared to champagne. Their undercoat is cream or white. The fur by their legs and tail are the darkest. 
They typically will have a mask as well and pink, light brown, or speckled nose. They can also have a bib or mitts or any other markings. I personally think Peanut is a bibbed cinnamon mitt, but she sometimes resembles a champagne as well, so who really knows? The next coloration is lilac. Lilac ferrets look very similar to champagne and cinnamon, but with almost a hint of lilac, which again, hence the name. Their guard hairs are a mix of champagne, cinnamon, silver, and light brown. Sometimes I think the peanut resembles a lilac too, so who knows. The next coat pattern is sable or poli. Sable or poli ferrets are generally what people think of when they think of a ferret. This is the most common coat pattern that you often see. Sable ferrets can come in a variety of colors, ranging from a lighter brown to black. They have a cream colored undercoat and have dark brown or black eyes. Their whole body is relatively the same color all over, but a little bit darker on the legs and tail. They have a standard full mask as well. They can have some variations such as a bib or mitts, which would classify them as a sable mitt or a bibbed sable, or if they're really fancy, a bibbed sable mitt. The next coat pattern is a Siamese. Siamese are very similar to a standard sable. They have dark guard hairs on their shoulders, hips, legs, and tail, and a lighter torso. Their mask is usually in a more V-shape as opposed to a sable's mask, which kind of goes up their forehead a little bit. Kitty Doe's mask is a perfect example of a typical Siamese mask as it goes in the V-shape. I can't tell if he's a sable too because his body is still relatively dark compared to an average Siamese, so I just call him my sable Siamese. The next coat pattern is a chocolate. Chocolate ferrets look very similar to Siamese or sable ferrets, but their fur is a more rich color resembling chocolate. They usually have lighter noses as opposed to sable or Siamese. They are usually pink, brown tea, or speckled brown. I will touch on these colors again on noses later in the video. Last but not least, we have black ferrets. Black ferrets are arguably the most rare coat pattern or coloring. Their guard hairs are true black and their undercoat is cream to white. Their eyes are almost always either very dark brown or black. The nose is usually either black, blackish brown, or a speckled black, so darker than all of the other color variations. They can have variations such as a bib and mitts as well. They can also be a black sable, which is just a sable ferret, but obviously black, black fur and a black mask with a cream or white undercoat. Now to get a little fancy, we have Angora ferrets. Angora ferrets are very similar to a normal ferret, but with much more and longer fur. Since their undercoat is the same length as their top coat, they commonly lack a true undercoat. Angora ferrets came to be through selective breeding, and because of this, they are commonly seen with health defects. Angora female ferrets can have difficulty nursing her kits to a full term because her milk supply dries out sooner than normal ferrets. Angora ferrets also have a distinct nose, which has extra skin folds near the nostril. They can also have fine hairs that grow on the folds of their nostril. Now, I just really quickly want to talk about the variations that you can see in ferret's coat pattern. So there's more than these four that I'm mentioning, but these are just the most common. So the first one is zipper, which literally looks like there is just a zipper running down the ferret's belly. This is commonly seen in sable and darker colored ferrets. The next one is a bib, which is what Pina has. It honestly also, hence the name, just looks like they're wearing a little bib down their chest. Bibs can be full in color or they can be like a lot smaller white patches of fur then we have mitts which is when the whole paw is white or just yeah white and colored different from the rest of their body and then they have milk toes milk toes literally looks like they just dipped the tip of their feet tip of their toes into some milk so just part of the foot is white and not all of it lastly i just wanted to talk about the different variations in noses ferrets can have a pink nose a brown tea, speckled, or black. And that is the end of this video. I hope that I covered a lot of the patterns. I think I covered most, if not all of them. There are a lot of variations in certain patterns, but I tried my best to either share those or find pictures of ferrets that like showed those different patterns and different variations. And yeah, I hope that this helped you guys 
if you enjoyed this video in any way, please, please, please make sure to like and subscribe. I will be posting, of course, more videos, whether they're informational or just about my little baby's lives. And yeah, thank you guys so much. As always, I love you guys so very much and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.